You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. Hey, people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we are going to chit-chat about how to even start setting goals that you're actually going to attain. So if you're like most people, you'll have two reactions when it comes to goal setting. Oh my God, I love goals. Tell me all your goals. What's in your 10 year vision? Or you're going to be like, oh Lord Christ, I do not want to set goals. So for a really long time, I was in bucket two. I, I like never really got the goals because I would write them down and then, you know, January 2nd and 3rd and 4th and 5th happens and you're like, well, looks like I didn't quit sugar this year. How about some waffles? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So let's chat about four ways that you can start to set really attainable goals. So the first one is to make a 10-year vision. And this is all about visualizing and developing a vision of what your future and your healing will look like. It's really important to sometimes begin with the end in mind. And that way, when you are trying to set goals for the present, you can look to the future as to what you want to achieve. So for example, if you're like, okay, in 10 years, I want to have a functional body so I can take that trip to India with my family, you can start to set goals in the now based on what you have to do in order to get that functional body and have the energy to go on that trip. The second thing you can do is try to list out 101 things that you want to accomplish in your lifetime. So 101 definitely feels like a lot. And this exercise gets difficult for a reason. Now, when you're going to be writing out your big list of all the things you want to achieve, the first 30 will come really easily. You know, like the stuff that has been on the top of your head. And usually that These goals that come out quickly are the look good goals. So what are look good goals? These are the ones that your ego creates. So for me, when I did this exercise, my look good goals came out so fast. Like in the first 10, I already had getting my MBA from Stanford and getting into Y Combinator, which are goals that are no longer on my goal list by any means anymore. When you're pushing yourself to finish the list from 31 to 101, that's where the juiciness really comes in because it's forcing you to think really deeply about what you want to do. So for example, for mine, I had to really think and stuff that came up was so different than what I expected. One of the things I had shared was my desire to have a backyard chicken farm. And, you know, You know, I don't know. That one is a little bit weird because I look at that and I think, uh, I don't eat eggs. So what am I going to do with all those eggs? And, uh, I don't want to take care of chickens, (laughs) but I didn't judge myself when I wrote it down and reflecting on it now, it represented having a life that was more back to the roots. Okay. Let's talk about option three, especially if option one and two do not sound very appealing to you. If you go to Pinterest, make a secret board, keynote, make it secret. You don't want anyone to be looking at your stuff. It definitely feels awkward when you feel like you have people peeking at your goals, especially if they're personal. And make a board that represents stuff that you want in your life. And just pull the images that speak to you and that have a certain resonance in your body when you see them. And it doesn't matter if it's a bunch of photos of pink peonies or that tan couch or that home in Malibu. Just start collecting evidence as to what you want. This can help inform you about the goals hiding behind them. Okay, tip number four. Try Daniela Port's The Desire Map. If you've been following my work for a while, you know that this book is my all-time favorite book and that DLP is my favorite author and yes I call her DLP because I talk about her so much (laughs) I gotta shorten it. Danielle's theory is all about figuring out how you want to feel 
and setting goals around that. Because most of our lives, we end up trying to get the babe, the boat, the bucks, and we hope that one of those things are going to make us feel a certain way. And usually, it doesn't. I mean, you can probably think about times in your past where you've got the degree or you've got the award and you're like, uh, this isn't exactly how I thought it would feel. I have definitely had those moments and I am sure you have too. So try this book. It's, it's a big workbook. The first part is all of her context and her theory behind it. And the second part is a workbook. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes for you to go check it out. And for the love of God, do DLP's The Desire Map. It will definitely help you and get you on course if you're feeling a little bit stuck. Okay, so my fifth piece for whatever option you picked, whether that was one, two, three, or four, I really recommend that you make a vision board. So why do we do a vision board? Well, most days you're not really going to notice it. It's going to be on your wall. And you're just going to walk past it. But on the days when shit gets really hard and you're going to be thinking, oh my god, why am I even doing any of this? Why am I even attempting to try this? You're going to see the vision board and you're going to be like, right, that's what we're aiming for. That's the vision. That's the end goal. And it'll help give you some perspective and give you a really sweet perspective shift when things feel really icky. You can also do this for super cheap. I would recommend just going right to Pinterest again, pulling images that represent your ideals and your dreams, and then printing them out just on your home computer in full color and assembling them to stick into a frame. Plus, you can just get a frame from your local Goodwill or Salvation Army and just spend a buck on it. That's it you'll find that this actually becomes a piece of art in your home. When I look at mine, I actually, I, well, I am in love with it. I personally think it's so beautiful and so pretty and the hints of blue and pink go so well together. It's actually my favorite framed photo in my entire office. And it's like, I mean, I don't know. It, it's, t- it's tied with the photo of my partner and I in Hawaii because, you know, Hawaii. <laughs> But I'm just saying, it serves as such a good reminder on those really hard days. So if you like this idea, give it a go. You have nothing to lose except maybe an hour of your time and a little bit of glue. So if you love today's episode, I'm going to throw some links in the show notes for some resources done by Lululemon Athletica and Light Your Leadership on how to set goals and how to formulate and craft your 10-year vision. If you want some more tips on goal setting via me and you like what you heard today, definitely check out my book, F This Shit, I'm Curing Myself, which you can just find on my website. There is a whole big chunk on how to set goals for your healing and how to actually attain them. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon.